We are going to switch over to talking about the latest on the coronavirus epidemic. According to Johns Hopkins University, the U.S. has uh, more than 1.8 million confirmed cases of the virus, resulting in 107,000 Americans passing away because of the virus. So Dr. Anthony Fauci has a little bit of a glimmer of hope for us, a, li a little silver lining, if you will. He says the United States plans to have a couple of hundred million doses of a vaccine as early as 2021. That is good news. Uh, so we've got Dr. Anita Ogden uh, here to talk us through the latest information on the coronavirus. So one of the things, doctor, that uh, Dr. Fauci talked about is his concern about the durability of a vaccine. Can you talk to us about, you know, what that means in terms of in the medical term and, and why there's a reason to be concerned about just how long lasting the vaccine may be? Yeah, so that is a key word that we keep hearing with regard to the vaccine. What durability means is that once a vaccine creates an effective immune response, how long does that last for? How long are we protected for? And the interesting thing is um, kind of the, the positive thing here that Dr. Fauci has often spoken to is that our bodies actually mount a very good response against COVID-19 and coronaviruses in, gen in general, and can knock them out. And this is unlike other viruses like HIV, which is why we've had difficulty developing a vaccine for that virus. Um, but what we've seen is that with past coronaviruses, and Dr. Fauci was talking about this, that we to the common cold. Uh, that immunity, that, that effective immunity that our body creates does not last very long. It wanes over time. So what does that mean for the vaccine? I think it's very likely that we will find an effective vaccine, which is great. However, we may need more boosting. So that speaks more to the scheduling of vaccine. It might be more like a flu vaccine that we get every year, or it could be another type of schedule based on what, um, you know, how it plays out in terms of these vaccines, many vaccines that are in development, um, and what they show as they go into approval. Uh, so, Dr. Ogden, uh, how have previous coronavirus strains reacted to vaccines uh, in the past? And could we potentially at some point down the line, um, just like the common cold, which of which there is no vaccine for, become, because of the exposure to the coronavirus, uh, not even need a vaccine? And I'm talking again, I don't know, I, I, you know, I failed biology in high school, so help me out here. But I'm just wondering if, if that's something that we could potentially look forward to. Yeah, I think there are people who say that eventually with enough herd immunity and enough exposure that this coronavirus could go that route and could become like a common cold. And that would be a great plus. But this effort right now with the vaccine is so much focused on this acute pandemic. So, you know, Vlad, you're absolutely right that that could happen. And it could be that ultimately you know, we won't need a, a vaccine for this virus. But uh, given that it's a novel virus and we have no immunity to it at this point, it's necessary at this point in time. Um, there's also something uh, a lot being spoken about that these, vac you were talking about vaccines, previous coronaviruses, the way that our body mounts a response to coronaviruses is through this neutralizing antibody that we keep hearing about. Um, and those tend to wane over time. So some vaccine developers are looking at a different part of the immune system, which are T cells. Um, and T cells can create longer memory. So attaching what we call maybe a T cell epitope to mobilize that part of the immune system may in fact also lead to a vaccine that can have long, longer term uh, memory and longer term immunity. Um, you know, when I was reading about you know, Dr. Fauci saying that um, a vaccine could be available, several million doses, like the first thing that came to mind to me is that, man, you know, our medical community has been under fire. Science has been um, sort of torn apart. And many people have expressed to me their nervousness about a, va about a vaccine that's been fast-tracked. Fast and I wondered how many people would actually be willing to take the vaccine. So. What is the percentage of the population that would be willing to take this vaccine to actually make a difference and protect us from another wave of this virus? 
You know, I think there was a recent study that showed that uh, about 40% of people said they would not want to take the vaccine. And there's some misconceptions there um, that will require a lot of community engagement by health officials to demystify the, max the vaccine and sort of share the safety and efficacy around all the phases that have been uh, done by the FDA to approve the vaccine. I think the kind of misconceptions are that people are worried that they couldn't get the virus from the vaccine, uh, that they might suffer significant side effects from the vaccine. Um, but one thing that people should really know is that this is a new type of vaccine. It's an RNA vaccine, which really hasn't been used in full force before uh, in our vaccine repertoire. And the RNA vaccine means that it's easier to produce. It's much more scalable. It really speaks to why, in some ways, we're, be, we're able to move so quickly at this time. Um, so I think a little bit of that concern that is it going to be safe, it, it actually is about modern science and how we're able to uh, use this new form of a vaccine, a blueprint of the virus, uh, and, and avoid the more laborious step of creating a virus and in, inactivating it in some cases, which is the old model that we're used to. Um, and then it's also really important to keep in mind that, you know, we keep reading about these phases, phase one, phase two, the, you know, with the Moderna vaccine will soon be starting phase two of their trial. The FDA has multi-step uh, processes and plans for vaccine approval. And they're highly, highly tied to safety efficacy and pr protecting patients. Um, and with each phase, we see an expanded number of patients. Phase two of the Moderna uh, trial will involve 600 patients, and then later in the summer, phase three, 30,000. And the FDA is pre pretty forthcoming in the fact that they, they share that, you know, in phase three trials, that far along, even only 25 to 30 percent of vaccines ultimately get approved and made. Um, so there's still a long stretch ahead of us. Um, and I think it's really important to remind people there that is because there are many, many check levels uh, regarding safety and efficacy uh, before we start giving it to people. All right, uh, Dr. Anita Ogden, I'm so glad, Doctor, that you're uh, able to join us today uh, to talk about this because uh, lest some people forget, I know it's hard when you turn on cable news or you look above the fold of major newspapers uh, and you don't see coronavirus uh, anywhere, uh, but that the virus is still out there. It is still uh, 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 killing people. The numbers are up to 107,000 in this country. Um, so I'm glad you're able to come on and, and shed some light on potential vaccines um, and, and what we're all facing here, which is really important. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.